Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are looking at uh, ways to run local models again um, using Olama, which has several pros. So first of all, it really I'm I'm not sure if this is if this is proven or somewhat tested, but to me it feels at least if you're running it with Olama and not with local uh, with LM Studio, um, I, it it's just quicker. It just seems to be more efficient in running models. But that is not the main thing. The the main catch of Olama is that it can kind of hot swap models. So basically what that means is you can have like three, four or 10 models installed and it can really quickly load other models. In LM Studio, you always have to go into the UI and swap the model manually. Also, if you use it in Rivet. And so you cannot do requests to 10 different models uh, in succession, but with uh, with Olama, you can, so it's pretty cool. You can just, you can run, have a rivet graph, which has uses like five different local models on different parts, and it will all automatically be handled and uh, it will always only load, uh, load the model that you need. So that is a pretty unique and cool thing. And um, yeah, let's just jump straight to it. So first of all, uh, there's not much about installing Olama. You just go to the Olama website, olama.ai, and you can download it. I mean, sadly, there is no Windows version yet, but they are saying it's coming soon. And once you installed it, you will just see that Olama lives up here. And that's all you need to care about if you're using Rivet. Usually, you would now need to go to the terminal and write some commands, and it's not super complicated, but um, the good thing is it's unnecessary <laughs> uh, the way we will do it now. Um, yeah, let me also show you one other page first. They have a library and here you can see all the models that Olama supports out of the box. And basically they have a really, really good list of all the interesting and trending models that you will typically need. And yeah, we will see. Um, it's super easy to install all of them and use them. So basically you can pick anything that is in this list and you just need to, to copy the names out here and then you are ready to go. Okay, let's go straight to Rivet. Ah, sorry, my. Okay. Most important thing here is first, you need to go to plugins. And there is the Olama plugin here. Just press the add button and then it should automatically install it. Please note that only adds it to your current project. So if you want it in another project or a new one, you need to do this again. And then if you go to the project settings here, you should be able to see it here. Rivet plugin Olama. That's how we see that it's working. And, um, ah, sorry, I need to go to the canvas. Then if you go to add here, you should also have now the Olama submenu. Okay. Generally, um, it's pretty easy to use. But there are some issues. So let me first just show you what the issues are. We are now trying to uh, have some instructions like your professional writer and write something about the topic the user uh, writes uh, asks you about, answer in 50 words maximum. And let's say we want to talk about cars. And now we want to use Dolphin 2.2 Mistral, which I have installed. I will, I will show how to install everything after this immediately. But let's first um, just see what happens if we run this then we can see that, yeah, we're getting an empty output. It's not working. And this has to do with the format here because, yeah, this model does not need Llama to instruct and it also doesn't work with raw. You don't really need to know, uh, we don't really need to go into details what this means, but there, I, I, I found a way to, to fix this and make it work for every model. But basically, underlying every LLM is somehow trained on getting those instructions in a specific format. And as you can see here, if we have chosen the Llama 2 template, then our text, your professional writer and so on, is now being embedded in those uh, tokens here. And then there's here is the, what the user wrote and then the end of instructions. And this can differ from model to model. And Olama usually takes care of this, but somehow the, the Rivet plugin is forcing us to make a selection and not use what Olama provides to us. But as I said, uh, I have a fix for that. I have a gra created graph that will automatically handle all of that for us. So yeah, 
let's get started. First of all, you would go into this graph here, get new model, because you need to install a model. As I said, you don't need to go to the terminal or do anything. It's uh, super simple using this rivet. And now, um, basically, we are. you have to go to the library I showed you before with the list of models and just pick a name, for example, Orca2. And then you press run here. And then Olama will automatically install this model for you. This, this will, of course, take some time depending on your internet connection, because I mean, they are, they can be lots of gigabytes big or maybe even 10 plus gigabyte, depending on what you chose. So uh, you have to be a bit patient. So this will run a long time. Just let it keep running. And at some point it will finish. You will also get a toast message in Rivet um, when it's done. Then you can go here and run this graph. And now, now you can see uh, what are your installed models? And now let's say you installed Orca 2, then Orca 2 should now be in the list. As you can see, I have three different models, Dolphin 2.2, Mistral, Orca 2 and Phi installed at the moment. And basically, then all the preparation is done and we can go to our main graph. And there are also some uh, instructions here you can read. Uh, but let me quickly tell you. So basically we have the same thing again. We have our system prompt or instructions for the LLM here. You can of course put anything in there you like. And we also have the user prompt. So talk about Tesla cars. Please also note I'm not using the prompt note here because that adds some more syntax and stuff that not every model might be trained on. <laughs> so let's just keep it as uh, better, keep it as text. It will automatically be added uh, they will automatically be added a username or whatever how the model needs it to be. And now, basically, you can yeah uh, connect as many models as you want to run this into to this array here. So if you only want one, I mean, there's no issue. You can just disconnect everything and just just use Orca two, or uh, that also works. And this now runs into a subgraph which handles all those issues. Let's first run it and let's see. I mean, this will not take a while, of course, because uh, it needs to load three pretty big LLMs. I mean, they're also gigabytes big and they need to be processed. And let's wait a second for the result. And then we will uh, take a short look what this is actually doing here. But the idea is basically that you can just use my subgraph to put um, everything in and then it will work out of the box and everything is being taken care of. <laughs> okay, I hope it will finish soon. So let's actually take a short look what's being the issue. Ah, it's fine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phi is a bit of a problem candidate because it did not it does not care that we wrote we only want 50 words. It gives us a wall of text. So this wall of text just took very long. But basically, uh, okay, let's look at here. Uh, we now have our um, we now have our responses. We have one response by Dolphin 2.2 Mistro, where uh, we have a short text about Tesla cars. We have one from Orca 2, and we have one gigantic text from Phi. That's also why it ro uh, was running so long because Phi is a model that's trained on logical reasoning and actually it's not, yeah, it does not like those kind of tasks. Um, it's also, it's even trying to uh, build some case here about uh, a car which is not white or silver and so on. So it's a reasoning model. It doesn't make sense. But as you see, now all everything is, is working perfectly. We are getting proper responses as we expect them and we can use them. So let's take a look what we are doing here. Um, yeah, um, mainly what we are doing, and you don't need to understand this in detail, I just want to give you a short idea, is, um, as I said, Olama is actually handling uh, those, usually handling those proper prompt formats for us. And that means that we can just, for every single model, uh, let's maybe go to the first one, to Dolphin 2, to, to Mistral, we can just use their API, which we are doing here, to get the template. And as you can see, for example, this is the template that um, 
that Dolphin uh, 2.2 is expecting. It wants some IM start strings and system and then now here the instructions go in and here the prompt goes in. And we are pulling that, we are getting that from the Olama API and then we are actually building the prompt as it should be here. And now let's look at another example. This is Orca 2. Now this actually looks the same, but Phi is different, I think. Yeah. Um, Phi is very different again. You see here, they want a completely different syntax, um, and but this is also taken care of. So that is mainly what this graph is doing. It's, And then we are running this um, into the Olama shed and we are saying that the format is raw because we built the correct format ourselves. Yeah, mainly that's it. Um, I created two more inputs, but they're optional. Just to show you here, one is the context window size. So for example, if we wanted Phi now to really force to give us a short answer, um, we can just maybe put this to 100 and shoot it in because now it only has 100 tokens and then it will be stopped. So now we should not have to wait this long and we should not get a wall of text. Um, that's one way to handle the models which are yeah, do, not behaving as they should. Let's take a look. It's still taking pretty long. Mm. Okay, but now it was quicker. And yeah, now we can see that even Phi gave us a prop. Well, a reasonable answer you see here. So this is actually an answer, a way to get the models to behave, uh, which is not so usual a uh, thing to do with ChatGPT, but with those local models, it makes sense to do this, as you can see here as well. And then I also um, added the temperature because it's a useful parameter. Um, so this is the same as for ChatGPT. If you want to have it creative, you can add a uh, one or something in the default value is 0 0.8, or if we wanted to completely stick to to the uh, prompts and to the stuff it should do and it should have no creativity, then just send a zero in here and it will behave. And if you need more settings, um, you can of course adjust this here and either change it directly in here or activate the the inputs for other settings as well like top p is maybe something that people are using and you could just create a graph input as well and move it there yeah but basically that's uh, that's it uh, this way you can run any uh, you can run lots of different local models which is super helpful also just for testing i mean it's hard to tell what model is good for which case now you can just uh <laughs> send everything in parallel or at least sequentially in all those into all those models and um, yeah it's pretty easy to to test them out see which model is strong at, at what of your tasks and uh, yeah what you should use or not use and yeah that's it uh, so have fun with that i will share this graph of course um i will uh, actually remove this negative example because it's not helpful um but basically um, yeah, you can just use my subgraph here. This is the main important thing you should may maybe want to import in your project. And just one note about it. If you want to send an array of models in here, so more than one model at the same time, you need to have this split activated when you call the subgraph so that uh, it will be run for each model. Otherwise, it will not work or you can only send in a single model. Okay. But that's all from me. I hope this helps. And as always, please like, subscribe uh, and leave me some comments. See you.